Well, the recent ham fest find got me uh, thinking about another video here. This one, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, spectrum analyzers because of this uh, recent ham fest find here we'll talk about in a moment. And uh, so I've got a little block diagram of a very basic spectrum analyzer drawn out here we'll go through in a minute. Uh, spectrum analyzer, unlike an oscilloscope that we've uh, shown in some of these other videos, which shows voltage variations versus time, a spectrum analyzer is designed to show you essentially frequency uh, versus amplitude. Uh, what it does is essentially you got a desired frequency range of interest from say a low frequency to some high frequency. The spectrum analyzer is designed to show you essentially graphically you know when you've got signals at or energy at specific frequencies. And the way it works is kind of like a swept tune receiver. Uh, if you kind of think about like a receiver like that guy down there on the floor, okay, if you took and tuned that receiver across a frequency band uh, maybe the FM broadcast band and watched the signal strength meter and plotted that out as you swept across uh, the, the band. That's kind of what a spectrum analyzer does. And this is a real basic block diagram. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because my, my Hamfest find is a little spectrum analyzer adapter that Tektronix made in the mid 70s called the uh, 1401. And it's not really a complete spectrum analyzer, it doesn't have a display, it uses an oscilloscope for its display. So uh, we're going to show you uh, show you that, but uh, since it's a very basic spectrum analyzer and it uses a scope for its display, I thought it would be an interesting uh, little tutorial. So uh, so let's talk about what this uh, what a basic spectrum analyzer is. Okay, I'm looking at this block diagram here. So basically, we've got uh, you know we have an input here where we'd uh, be sending our input our signals coming in, and that could be coming from an antenna, it could be coming from a system, some signal uh, system or circuit you're working on. First thing you typically go into in a spectrum analyzer is a variable attenuator, and that adjusts the amount of power that is seen by the next stage, which is typically a mixer. Okay, so we've got you know, our, our RF signal coming in, or maybe a multitude of RF signals coming in. We'll adjust the level of them, kind of like a volume control, to adjust the, the level of power that, see, that hits the mixer. Now the mixer is a special little device that basically can take two signals and you know essentially multiply them together but uh, generally any nonlinear operation works and the idea here is that we're doing something called a superheterodyne conversion big fancy name for doing a frequency shift so if we look at this mixture we have two inputs we have our signal of interest we'll call this F in okay right here F in it's coming in here and then here we'll have another frequency called FLO LO standing for local oscillator and that's coming from an oscillator down here. And what a mixer does, kind of a magic little thing, really just a little bit of trigonometry, if we take a signal at one frequency here at F in, and a signal at another frequency here at F L O, the mixture is going to output a number of different things. And the two that we're typically interested in is we're going to get a new signal at a frequency that's equal to F in plus F L O. And we're also going to get another signal there at a frequency of F in minus F L O. Okay, so we're and we'll get other components and other signals that land here too. But these are the two of interest. Typically, only one of these two products. Okay, and the idea here is that by creating this what we call intermediate frequency here, we essentially all you have to do to make tunable to you know basically tune across a given frequency range. The only thing we have to make tunable is this local oscillator. So basically by selecting a particular local oscillator frequency as we tune this back and forth, we can take any frequency from this range of Fn and make it land at a particular desired frequency here that we'll call the intermediate frequency. Okay, so the idea is that all of our you know, resolution bandwidth, our filtering that we're going to do, or an amplification that we're going to do on the signal is only going to happen at one frequency. So it makes the job of the design of these filters much easier. Okay. Um, and typically what we're doing is we're trying to sweep across this given frequency range. So the way we do that is by making this local oscillator adjustable. Typically it's a voltage controlled oscillator, or VCO. So it'll have a tune voltage control input. And if we drive that tune voltage with a ramp generator, we'll basically cause FLO to sweep from one, you know, from, from some low frequency to some high frequency, which is going to essentially sweep across this input frequency range and make you know these signals that are appearing here land in the IF okay and therefore you know so the IF is really not changing we're just going we're changing what lands in there from the mixer okay 
And then the resolution bandwidth is kind of like the filter that you have on your radio receiver. You know, when you tune to a particular station that you're listening to, you're not hearing the station below it or above it because you're only hearing what's passing through this filter. Typical spectrum analyzers have a number of different filters that have different widths, so it makes, you, makes it easier to resolve very closely spaced signals, which is why we call this a resolution bandwidth, okay, or it's typically called an RBW filter. Then we take the output of that filter and go into a simple AM detector, okay, to detect how much power, how much energy we've got sitting in, you know, coming through that filter. So a simple little thing. So right here we can call this the video output. I mean that's essentially the output of this detector is going to be really what we're interested in, okay. Um, so it's kind of like an AM radio, if you think about it that way. But then there's also an optional video filter that can take any of the noise and variations that you get here and low pass filter that as well. So typically you've got the ability of looking at either the video filtered output or just the raw output of the detector. Okay. So how do, make, how do we make all this work on a, an oscilloscope? Well, we can look down here. We've got, if we just have a basic oscilloscope, we've got an X input and a Y input. Normally the X is driven by the horizontal oscillator of the scope. Uh, but in this case, since we've got a ramp generator that's driving the tune control, that will essentially be our X axis. So that will essentially calibrate the F axis from the low end to the high end of our F in range that we were just in looking at over here. Okay, so that'll drive the X input. And then the Y input, essentially the detector, uh, you know, the vertical deflection here is going to be from our detector, and that could be either directly from the detector with the switches up in this position, or from the low pass filtered or the video filtered output that will drive the Y input. Pretty cool. That's all it really is. That's what a basic swept spectrum analyzer is. Um, this is about a 10 or 12 year old uh, commercial uh, swept spectrum analyzer here is an Agilent uh, or uh, HP Agilent E4411B. Uh, but this is what I found at the Hamfest, and this is a really cool little uh, uh, module. It was made by Tektronix in the mid 70s, called a, uh, a 1401 uh, spectrum analyzer module. And uh, this was actually designed to be mated up with another, an, a small oscilloscope about the same size that kind of sat, you know, kind of right above it or below it. It's kind of the handles kind of interlinked together. And uh, that little oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer both could be battery powered. So it was really one of the first decent performing battery operated portable spectrum analyzer solutions. So if we take a look at this, we can see all the same controls uh, that we talked about on the block diagram. We've got an RF input right here. Okay. We've got a uh, input attenuator control. That's our variable attenuator from right here. Okay. We've got uh, Let's see, this is our center frequency control, okay, and over here we have our span control, okay, frequency span in megahertz per division, okay, we can kind of see that, uh, focus well enough on that and kind of see our, our frequency span here, okay. And we also have a resolution bandwidth filter, this is uh, by adjusting the knob here, you might be able to kind of see the shaded area moving from a thousand, uh, a thousand hertz, a hundred, uh, excuse me, a thousand kilohertz or one megahertz. The middle position is a hundred kilohertz. The bottom position is ten kilohertz. There's our video filter switch, okay, to switch the video filter. In this case, this is our sweep rate control, okay. So um, we can sweep uh, slowly or fast, and that's basically is how fast are we sweeping across on this ramp, okay. And you have to be careful at narrow resolution bandwidths. You can't sweep too fast or you might miss something because you'll sweep through it. You won't give this filter, or excuse me, this detector time to charge, or even the filter time to charge for that matter. Okay, so I've got a center frequency control, a, a span control, essentially a resolution bandwidth control, and then a sweep rate control. Okay, so all of this is, you know, the controls for the basic spectrum analyzer. But how do we hook this up? Uh, if we look over on the side, okay, let's see if I can position this over here where we can see. Um, here's my video out. Right? Where's that video out? That video out is what uh, is coming right from here, either de the detector or the, the video output of the filter. So that would go to our Y axis of the scope. Okay, this one here says sweep voltages. Okay, so that's the sweep. I just knocked my analyzer down. <laughs> that's my sweep voltages. That's going to be what's causing that VCO for the local oscillator to change. Okay, so you can go hook this up to the scope. Let me put this down here and prop this back up. And. Uh, get this, the uh, piece of the coax here from the scope over here. Okay, 
So let's see, we look over at the scope. Uh, channel one is gonna be my X input. That's the one with the blue here. So let's gra grab, grab the blue coax. That's gonna be from the sweep. So let's go over to the sweep voltages and put that on there. Okay. So that means the other coax sitting in my lap here is going to be the Y. So let's stick that over here. Okay. So now if we go over and look at the, uh, let's see here, let's do this. Let's go and look at the scope here, and uh, I'm going to just kind of go up and let's put on channel 1 to start off with here. Let's kind of slow this down. So I can see channel 1 is really, there's my sweep voltage. If I pull back here, so we can kind of see both of what I'm doing. If I adjust my, this is the sweep rate control, okay? If I adjust the sweep rate control back and forth, you can kind of see the thing slowing down or going faster and faster and faster, okay? So that's my sweep control. Let's speed the scope up a little bit and kind of see it a little bit better. You can kind of see it going slowly or very fast. You see if I go really slow, you can actually just see the thing rising up, right? Okay. But then we can go faster, 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 faster. So you can see there's there's the control. That's the ramp, gen ramp generator right there that's going to adjust the tune of the VCO. Okay. So that's what that is. All right. So now the that's on channel one. Channel two is the video output. Okay, let's turn channel 2 on, all right, and now with channel 2 turned on here, I'm going to turn this down here a little bit, okay, channel 2 turned on, that's the video output, okay, that's the output of the detector, and what we can see is that as I come across here, I've got no signal, no signal, no signal, I've got a signal sitting right here, right about in the middle of the sweep, which is my center frequency, center frequency, if we look at the knob here, is dialed into about 250 megahertz, you look up at my signal generator, yeah, I got a 250 megahertz signal coming out, okay? So that's what's being coupled into the analyzer. So there we go. So how do we, now if I can adjust my sweep speed here, you can actually see that everything's kind of moving along with it, but that's not so convenient. I and mean, I could go in here to the scope and kind of, pull, you know, maybe adjust my sweep speed to kind of get all that, all that to line up here. But the best way is to really let this input be the X input to the scope. So the way on this scope to go to XY mode is to literally just dial down the sweep speed until you get down to the very bottom and boom, now I'm in XY mode, okay? And in XY mode, I can just turn off channel one. I don't really need it. So now I'm getting the sweep I need. So all I need to do is adjust my, say my volts per division and my position to kind of move that across, all right? And I can just move my, uh, my axis up and down. So now this is dr basically drives like a spectrum analyzer. If I change, uh, the resolution bandwidth, you'll notice that uh, uh, we kind of want to try and get the sweep speed here so that uh, we uh, don't flash so much on the screen here. Let's see if this works out there. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Okay. Now I adjust the resolution bandwidth. Okay. We can actually see that the signal gets really narrow there because now we're, we're restricting ourselves with a narrower resolution bandwidth, restricting ourselves to the energy that's in a very narrow span. Or if I go wider, you can actually see that. In fact, if I take and go make a, uh, a smaller span here, so right now I'm looking at a span, oh, let's see, we're looking at a span of 10 megahertz per division. So every division across the scope screen is, represents 10 megahertz. So if my center is, two, is 250 megahertz, and I've got 10 megahertz on either side, I've got a 100 megahertz span that I'm looking at here. So if I adjust this down to say, oh, let's see, let's, let's adjust this to, uh, let's see, let's adjust it to say one megahertz per division, okay? So now one megahertz per division, okay? Let me take a look at this here, let's kind of adjust it and get this all centered up here. So my resolution bandwidth is one megahertz, so I can actually see this, I'm just looking at the width of my filter, okay, the one megahertz filter that I have. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus a little better. But now if I adjust the resolution bandwidth to 100 kilohertz, Okay, so now I can see that's my filter, the 100 kilohertz filter. If I adjust it down to 10 kilohertz, now I'm looking at the 10 kilohertz filter. And I'm probably sweeping a little bit fast. Notice how the amplitude kind of changed a little bit there? Okay, so I'm probably sweeping a little bit too fast with a 10 kilohertz filter. If I slow it down just a little bit, you can see the amplitude come up. Okay, but that's really what a basic spectrum analyzer is. It's uh, basically this type of swept tune superheterodyne receiver with video output and, and ramp or VCO sweeping voltages being applied to an XY input of an oscilloscope. And that's uh, what a basic spectrum analyzer is. So that's what this 1401 module is. 
it kind of you know all in one spectrum analyzer like this box right here has got all of those things all built in uh, there's no uh, there's no separate oscilloscope that's needed but uh, but this is a fun find um, you know, it's something that uh, was kind of a unique product of its day and uh, yeah, gave me an excuse to talk about what basic spectrum analyzers are so hope you found this helpful thank you